I love black. That's really good. I love black and white photography. And I found over the years there are many ways of converting your image to black and white. The simplest way, which is I say the amateur way of doing it, is literally just pressing the V button, which desaturates everything. Then there's the pro way of doing it, which is tailoring the black and white to the image. And that's how I do it, to give it, to the, give it the style that I like to give the images. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this image, convert it to this image, the amateur way, and then convert it to this image, which is the pro way of doing it. We're gonna use Lightroom, so open it up, follow along, convert your images. Let's rock and roll. All right guys, so this is the image that we're going to convert to the awesome black and white. And yeah, as you can see, I'll just show the original image. Yeah, nice. And this is the behind the scenes with the awesome team. Give you an idea of what the shoot was all about. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, really nice. Alrighty. So yeah, so we've done the edit and it looks great and we just want a black and white version of it. So the first thing we need to do is we duplicate the image because we never want to adjust the original. So we now have a duplicate down here. And like I said, the amateur version is press V. Black and white, done, walk away. Yeah, that's amateur. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you my process of getting a professional looking black and white image on the style that I like. So make another duplicate. So we start off with the amateur version and then we do our own adjustments. So now what we do is we literally go down the develop module of your basic panel and do your minor adjustments. Now these adjustments are for the entire picture. So we always start with the entire picture and then come back down to secondary edits. We go down here. Now because we've already edited the image, uh, the exposure levels are pretty much on the mark. Uh, you can see in the histogram here that it's all pretty sweet. Uh, I like my image contrasty, so what we're just gonna do is we're gonna bring up the contrast a little bit just to start with. I always bring my highlights down, always bring my shadows up just to see everything. Uh, and then we have our whites, we go up and down. I kinda like my whites up because what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the attention to our, or bring the focus of attention to our subject. And then everything else, we're, we're just that blacks, we're just gonna darken up a little bit. Just to start with, there we go. Then we go up and down, just to up and down this panel, just to see if our changes can be just modified slightly. So I'm just playing, just getting that right little thing as a whole picture type feel. Yeah, that kind of looks all good to me, just at the moment. We'll come down, I love a bit of texture, just a little bit of texture, just gives a little bit of an edge, because that's my style, like it. A little bit of clarity, not too much. Clarity can be very dangerous, because you can see, you bump it all the way up, it's garbage. So yeah, just a little bit of clarity. And then dehaze. Look, dehaze is a powerful tool. You can see, very powerful tool. So just use its subtlety. Subtlety? Subtly. Subtly. Uh, so a little bit there. All right, cool. Now what I normally do is I jump down to my black and white section or my color, uh, black and white mix, sorry. And I normally play with the skin tones. Uh, so which is the red, oranges, yellows, things like that. So I normally start with the oranges and just kind of bring up everything. Again, subtlety is key here. Now these will differ depending on the image, obviously, and also um, this type of skin tone. And remember, we're dealing with big picture only stuff at the moment. As a whole, well, how does it look? Right, now we go into curves. Curves are another beast. They are an advanced topic, but once you understand them and practice, they will help you create amazing images. Now the way I play with my curves, especially with this image, is we're just gonna grab it, we're gonna bring down, we're gonna find our black point, our dark and our shadows, how we want it. 
So you do it to where we need it, and then we grab the secondary, and we play with our highlights uh, and make sure that it's about where we want. And that's, that's what we got here. That's, that's kind of what I feel like. Um, as you can see, everything's a little bit crazy. So it's a little bit too much at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up here and bring down my contrast just a fraction. Here we go, nice, nice, like it. Right, so there's our basics done of our, I call it my primary color edit. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to do our secondaries. Bring a brush, and you can see my settings for my brush. I normally like it about 20% flow. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we need exposure and we need exposure. And then what I normally do, because we have a flow of 20% on my brush, I have minus four, so maximum um, darkening. So then we have a nice brush, we kind of just ease it in. And the way I do it, why I do it this way, is so I can layer. So if I just go over and then over and then over like this, it just gets darker and darker and darker, 20% of the time. So I'm just gonna undo that to get back to what we had it. There we go. Alrighty. I kinda want a little bit more exposure in the face. So what we do is we get an, another paintbrush. We, this time we're gonna increase our exposure. Again, 20% flow on our brush. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna increase the details in certain areas of the image just to give it a bit more feel. So what we do is I'm just gonna create another brush. Now I've created my own little brushes here. So you can see here, it's a custom Iris Enhance I kinda like. It just increases the contrast, adds a few little details in. I, I like it, it works really well. But uh, again, if you look at my brush, I've changed it now. My flow is now 100%. And then when I go back to the image, if I go over that section there, it kind of brings out my highlights, sharpens the edges, gives the awesome illusion of it being a lot more than what it is. And I'm, I'm kind of liking that. I kind of think that works really well. Now, if you want to go that one extra step, you can create one more brush. We'll go back to our exposure levels and we're gonna do full exposure, but this time bring our brush flow down to 15 to 20%. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of dodge and burning. So we're just gonna quickly just go over the highlighted areas in the arms. Really subtle, just a little bit. It just helps give definition to muscle tone. You don't need much, just need a little bit. There we go, like so, that looks pretty cool. And I consider that done. There's one more little trick I wanna show you. Once you've got this done, I'm just going to make a duplicate. Once you've got this done, there's a trend of having crushed blacks. It's really easy to do. What you need to do is you go into your curves, grab your bottom corner point and just lift it. Now if you go up high, it's a great effect. So there you have it. There's our original image. There's our amateur version, black and white. There's our pro version with high contrast. And with a little tweak, we have a pro version crush blacks. So yeah, that's it. That's all you need to do. That's how I do it. Saying that, there's a million other ways to do it. So yeah, if you like it, tell me. If you don't, too bad. Anyway, no one commented about the coffee last time. So I'm just enjoying my coffee this time. So yeah. Anyway, cool. Talk soon. Bye.